morning, morning. So what we got for today, we're going to be checking out. This is the Knipix Raptor pliers. Okay. Had these now for a couple of years, I think. They've been very beneficial for certain things. We'll talk about that later. We're going to side by side compare them with the new Icon version of the Raptor pliers. So already kind of excited to check these out. A few differences I noticed right away. One of those is the way that the select, the uh, adjustable mechanism was made. See on this one, it's a bigger button, nothing on the back side. This one, it's a smaller button, a little clip on the back side. We'll see what the uh, differences are and talk about it. And let's see if we can check this thing out too. We haven't used it yet. Hopefully one of our morning services allows us the ability to check this thing out and use it. It looks really cool. Seen some guys use it. Seems like it'd be really handy. So we'll check it out. All right, got this 2000 Mercury Sport. It's got starter issues. When you uh, try to crank it, it just goes wee, wee. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull the starter out, take a look at the arbor, take a look at the flex plate. Oops, wrong one. I was actually undoing the <clears throat> And this is for the ignition. It goes to this connector here. This thing goes to the starter. And how you get that off, you gotta take a little pick. There's a detent ball right there. See that little hole there? You gotta take a pick push on that and then push the connector up. It looks like we got a couple of 15s. Starter should come out. That little WD-40 goes a long ways. It was being a pain in the butt. Yeah. Ended up being 14 millimeter. All right, let's take a look and see what's going on here. the bench test that. Let's see how does flex plate look. Can you guys tell? There's a little shine to the gear, but it doesn't look bad. Power side, yeah? Yeah. Oh, did it again. Uh, Alright, let's see. They probably fried it. No idea. It was already pre-fried. Well, I mean, I know I had a problem, but I'm saying the reason why it's probably not even, what was it? It was spinning before though, wasn't it? It would go, Wee! Yeah. And that, boys and girls, is exactly why I don't trust myself with this thing. I just don't know enough about electrical to use it proficiently. Luckily, we were able to bench test the starter after all. Solenoid shot. It wasn't really doing a whole bunch in the car. It's not doing a whole bunch outside the car. So we're gonna get it switched out. So before you think that the power probe is so, so cool, you just have to have it. I hope you know more about electrical than I do because uh, it'd be a waste of money otherwise. Still a pretty cool tool. I'm just not very proficient with it. All right, 2016 Kia Soul. Customer states a vehicle is making a lot of noise and the dash is lit up with a warning. So let's see what we got. Evap leak. Camshaft position timing. Another camshaft code. Knock sensor. Range performance. Right, let's fire it up and listen to it. Ooh. Sounds 
horrible. like a diesel that's not good had my dyad guy help me out sounds like it needs chains timing chains need to be done some other stuff he'll put it together We'll take it apart. All right, on to something easy for a second. Just gonna replace this heater hose. The fun part is gonna be trying to get back here to unclip that. So I'm gonna use them um, hose pliers from Icon. We got it. Sometimes you just can't beat doing it by hand. exactly why we do a coolant pressure test verification so this could very well be thermostat leak or upper hose mechanic monday baby senor jefe snap this is a nice box string tools like the color what's this sir Gun. Ooh, checking that out. Pretty nice. Pro tag catalog, baby. We haven't seen none of these in a little bit. Here's one for April. These are the tool deals. Got the Milwaukee Overload in here. The die grinder is freaking awesome. Here's the vice grip set that they have. Check out these freaking Knipics. Weird angle things, dude. Look at these things. Isn't that wild? 
but I don't need lighter. them, but you kind of almost want them just because of the way they look. All right, here's a couple of other weird Knipix ones that I didn't know about. Check these things out. It kind of reminds me of those vampire pliers from like a long time ago. These things are pretty freaking cool. And check these weird things out. Like needle nose almost. It's got some pretty sick teeth on them. Okay, so I used to have one of these things a long time ago, and this thing was fantastic. This is a beast, these NOCO boosters. This thing's just amazing. We have a couple of these at the shop. We use them all the freaking time. Look at that, it says it jumps a six liter diesel. Well, that was pretty cool. Jeff lets us go on the truck, check it out. Like I said, he's a busy man with a busy schedule, but at least he's cool enough for us to jump on there and check some things out. You guys were asking about the SOG backpack, 50 bucks, he said. I was checking a few other things out. Take a look at the Pro Tech catalog when we get home. All right, see if she lives. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! Nice. Trust the old flathead, baby. Works almost every time. Fox screwdriver, oversized edition. <sighs> Sometimes snap rings just aren't, I don't know, good enough. Sometimes they work great. Going direct injection, because <laughs> they just don't make carburetors like they used to. Look at all this wiring, man. Yeah, Most of it's pretty easy, though. Yeah. Most of it's already done. This. Where's uh, that go? Fuel pump. So you gotta run it all the way back to the tank? Yeah. Obviously. Are you gonna make it to where the tank is like reachable from the top, like in the back, or are you gonna go right to the neck hole? You know, uh, like how they have the race cars and stuff? Where they just no. kind of like hog a hole out, that way they can just quick fill? Nope. Nope. Super nice. Two thousand six Saturn van, pretty much Chevy. Lots of bypass tubing. Customers complaining is that it's overheating. See some sludge build up, but uh, to be honest, the uh, cap is full. Look at this. It's got running. So it's running water through here to fill this up. So. We're gonna add some water, bring that up to the top, pressure test it. Kinda wanna get a view of the water pump, cause it is wet, it does look oily though. Well, pass there somewhere. The coolant pressure tester is probably the number one tool that I use the most often here at the Independent. Lots of overheating around this time frame. Weather's starting to warm up. People are starting to complain. Oh, okay. Got a radiator hose leaking right here. You guys see that? Uh, see 
bubbles. Hey, what's going on everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Hope you're enjoying your Monday. And I hope you enjoyed a day in the life of an indie shop mechanic. Now you guys got a chance to see a handful of cars and different things that I'm dabbling with on a day-to-day. -day. You're probably going to see these in upcoming videos. Not every single video is going to be entitled a day in the life as an indie shop mechanic because there's going to be something specific that I want to talk about towards the end of the video, but just to kind of reference this, just so you guys can kind of see which direction I'm going with, with my channel, with my videos, I'm gonna to try to do like a daily vlog kind of style where I free shoot some of the things that I'm working on, give you tricks, tips, and this, that, and the other about being a mechanic and working on all different types of cars, tools that I like, tools that I'm using. You'll get a chance to see some of the tools put in action, like whether we have them and we've had them for like 10 years or we've had them and we just barely got them or checking them out because someone decided to send it to us. That being said, we're going to talk about two different things now. One, earlier this morning I mentioned we do a little side-by-side -side comparison. I didn't have a chance to use either one of these today. I didn't have a need for them. But we are going to do a little side-by-side, -side, handsy, feelsy, checking them out here at the house, right? The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the ProTech catalog. Kind of doing an all-in-one free shot. So this video might be extremely long, but it's going to be awesome. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. First things first, let's go ahead and dive into this. So, <clears throat> the Knipix Raptor Pliers, okay? Yes, it is actually pronounced Knipix. It's not Nipix. It's not, uh, there's so many different, it is pronounced Knipix, Okay. That's been put to the test. There's many channels that have just talked about it all the time. People said you wouldn't say knife. Look, man, this is a German product. That's how they pronounce it. That's what it's called. Get over it. All right, let's talk about the selector button. We were talking about that a little bit this morning. So you push this button to adjust it, right? And then what helps keep it locked in place is there's this back tin piece here that has a fold that keeps constant pressure on the back side, it almost looks like a mini tiny Torx bit, right? So as you're moving and adjusting it, once it locks into place, this little piece applies constant pressure to the button to kind of keep you there. Now I have used this for air fittings at the house when I was over in JT and I had my Ingersoll Rand compressor. I've used this for various things like EGR tubes. I've used this for just a handful of random things that you would just never think that you would need something like this. And these came in handy. It's got a nice squeeze handle that applies constant pressure. I believe it to be a worthwhile product. I would actually never get rid of this specific pair of pliers. I enjoy them. I'm planning on keeping them. It's one of my top favorites as far as like random tools that you never think that you would need. Okay. It does fit lots of different sizes. Metric, SAE, doesn't matter. This thing's going to get a bite and it's going to work and it's going to help you either tighten or loosen something depending on what you're doing. Let's talk about the Icon version. The Icon version does have a thicker handle as you can already kind of tell, okay? I feel like it does offer an amount of squeeze. Looking at them side by side, I do feel like the Knipix has more of a stronger hold platform. Can you see how much more bite that it has on the lower shoulder or the lower mouthpiece. Do you see how wide this is and how much more bite it gets right there? Now let's talk about the Icon one here for a second. If you look at the lower jaw on the Icon, it is about half as thick as far as its overall bite. And as you get down to the closing part, if you look really, really close without applying pressure there's an air gap okay now let's look over here at the Knipix there's no air gap it's got a nice firm squeeze exactly where it is without applying really any pressure at all okay there's no air gap now we go back to the icon there is an air gap right there if I do squeeze it where it is now I got to really squeeze it for the two pieces of metal to touch. Okay, that's something I just noticed. Let's slide it a little further down. 
and I go to apply tension, I do feel like I'm getting some kind of bite, but again, I'm not on a fastener. The back side of this button, so from what I can tell from looking at it, is it's spring actuated. You can probably barely see it if you can see it at all. There is a spring actuation here. So if I push this in, that's to help me to adjust it. And once it's there, it's locked into place, okay? But again, it's spring actuated on the inside of the button. Yes, there is some flex here, and it does appear that it, it does have a good amount of squeeze. <clears throat> Looking at the handles, okay, we have a split design here in the back. Just by kind of looking at it, I can tell you they're fairly close in similarity as far as thickness goes. The Knipix does have the handle that is almost molded to the plier itself, which you can see. Whereas on the Icon, there is a glue-like material that is holding it in place. Now, I don't feel like this is one of those kind of tools where you're going to be squeezing and pulling at the same time. So, no, I don't believe you're going to have any issues with the uh, glue on the actual tool itself with the handle to slide off. You're not going to be squeezing and pulling it towards you. So, I don't feel like that's going to be an issue. How's the grip? The grip is actually pretty comfortable. You can definitely feel the metal more in your hand on this Knipix version, where this feels more marshmallowy on the Icon. Okay, that is my side-by-side -side first initial thoughts and impressions for the Raptor pliers from Knipix and Icon. If I did not buy the Knipix ones or I didn't have the money for the Knipix ones, would I at least try out the Icon? Absolutely. Why? They make it affordable for you. And knowing what I know about the Knipix one, if I wanted a universal tool, yes, why not? Why wouldn't you give it a shot? At least try it out and feel it out for yourself. Do I feel like it has as much bite as the Knipix? Mm, I'm going to say not on bare tool. As far as on a fastener, that remains to be seen. We will find out. Okay, I'm going to try it out and I'll let you guys know later when I get into a situation where I can use it. All right, now we're gonna jump over to the ProTech catalog. I haven't seen anything in this catalog, couldn't tell you what I like, don't like, etc. So let's just get right into it. In the beginning for the April ProTech 2023 catalog, you will see on the front, we do have an Irwin Vice and we have some ATD mirrors. Mirrors do come in handy and the trade of being a mechanic. We open it up to page one. They do have a uh, scan tool on here. I'll tell you guys know more about that than I do. I've played with them a little bit. There are features and benefits to having an all tell. We've talked about that in past videos and there are features and benefits on other scan tools that can also be beneficial. Even Keith DeFazio has talked about it numerous times on his channel as same as uh, Southwest Auto. There's a lot of people, okay? Pauly's Auto's talked about it. Um, Jesus, I can't remember. What Brandon Dills has talked about it. There, there's just so many different channels. Corey's Garage, Corey's Diagnostics, I'm sorry. Look, check them out. Check all those names out. Follow them. Watch their videos. These guys know what they're talking about when it comes to scan tools. Okay, ATD has a 13-piece, 3 8 drive, both extractor socket set. Would these come in handy even from a lube tech standpoint? Yes, absolutely, especially for oil drain plugs and weird fasteners that somebody just rounded from using the wrong size tool or just from it being aged. They have an ATD um, engine stand. Okay, if you're a shop owner or you were a DIYer, that might be beneficial to have collapsible legs to make it more narrow in your garage. We have a platinum six piece combination internal external snap ring plier set. Snap ring pliers do come in handy. They do have their purpose. You saw me today where they didn't work out. Okay, it was a snap ring situation, and a flat head is what helped get the job done. Ingersoll Rand has a hammer, air hammer, plus a whole bunch of adapters. Does an air hammer and a bunch of adapters come in handy as an indie shop or even a dealership tech? Yes, absolutely. You're going to use just about all of these. You're going to want it. An Ingersoll Rand air hammer is very beneficial. It's very strong. It's very duty. I just happen to have a Matco hammer, air hammer, which I like the best. It works out. It's a freaking beast. I love it. 
I don't really see anything else on this page that I want to talk about. Let's go ahead and flip to the next one. Next one, we got a lot of Irwin pliers here. Okay, we got Irwin vice grips. We've got Irwin welding clamps. They come in a bag. They come in a storage tin that you can put inside of your toolbox drawer. They have crescent wrenches that come in a sleeve or adjustable wrenches made by Irwin come in a sleeve. Look like a comfort grip. And they give you some koozies and stuff like that. Are Irwin vice grips legit? Yes, they're probably one of my more favorite vice grips out there. Let's jump over to the next page where they have the cobalt and various drill bits. Okay, let me look real quick. They have a cobalt alloy. They have a black and gold metal index. They have a turbo max drill bit. Uh, it does not appear that they have any kind of hyper step drive. So all the drill bits that I've used over the years, the black oxide, gold oxide finish made for softer metal and soft plastic, those are legit. You're going to use them for those situations. It's going to save you from burning out your cobalts. I wouldn't recommend buying cobalt drill bits and then using them for everything because you're going to burn them out pretty quick. Cobalt drill bits do have their time and place. And the TurboMax ones I have used, those come in handy too. You're going to enjoy them. You're going to use them. I would say if you can only afford two different sets and you can't afford all of them, I would go with the TurboMax and the gold and I would go with the cobalt and the left-handed drill bit. Right hand drill bit and the, uh, the gold, and I would go left hand drill bit with the cobalt. That's what I would do if I was you. That's what I have right now currently. And I also just recently in the last couple of years got the hyperstep drive. Those have become a new favorite. They're supposed to be as strong as cobalt steel, but I have the cobalt left handed. I've got the turbo max, and now I have the hyperstep drive, and all of them are very useful and beneficial. Uh, next page just talks about remotes. The following page, sorry, talks about I'll tell scan tools some more. That's all well and good. We haven't played with those in a while. Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. What can I say? Yes, they do have some really good products, Kay. A lot of people enjoy the Milwaukee lineup. I have owned quite a few Milwaukee products over the years. I've tested them, tried them out. I had the Milwaukee Fuel Half Inch. That thing was a beast, but sometimes the battery slot made it to where I had wrapped zip ties around to keep it together. The 3 8 stubby impact was great, but the plastic clips on the battery retention would break and I would get a Knight Rider effect and then it wouldn't want to work. So I'd have to wrap electrical tape around it just to keep the battery and base together. Aside from that, they held their charge for a long time. The batteries seem to last almost forever. They do pack a punch. They are heavy duty. Somebody asked me in the comments, what Milwaukee tools do I have left? I have a little tiny polisher buffer for like, sticky adhesive stuff on cars and for little tiny polish jobs that I was doing on my motorcycle and I have a um, soldering iron those are the only oh and a Milwaukee heated jacket those are the only three things that I own currently in Milwaukee is there anything Milwaukee based that I would consider adding to my arsenal be it M12 or M18 yes I wouldn't mind adding the 90 degree angle um, I guess you call it like a die grinder okay i have an air right i have a pneumatic one right now i like it it does get cold you, you got to use the air hose but most recently i have been borrowing a couple of guys they have the 90 degree polishing buffing wheel slash grinder and that thing is a freaking beast i love it i use it for brakes and rotor jobs cylinder head gasket cleanup exhaust manifold cleanup intake man i'm telling you it's it's just it's one of those m12s that's on my later in life list okay right now we're still trying to work out our own budget and finances and stuff okay i'm trying to keep what it is that i got get rid of things that i don't need next page atd looks like a couple of air compressor pumps if you're doing ac work at your house following page robin air uh ac cooling gauges i myself have a pair that I believe was made by Master Cool that it was rebranded as Cornwell. I still have those. I don't even use them anymore. Okay, I used to use them a handful of times at the dealership. I used them quite a bit when I was at the independent because everybody had the AC machine. Now we got a couple of AC machines and not everybody's doing AC work. So I don't really have a need for the gauges. They're still hanging up in the garage. I'm probably going to try to get rid of them at a swap meet or sell them to a friend. I don't know. I don't need them though. I don't, I don't use them. I don't plan on doing AC work at my house. Next page, lockout kits. Are these beneficial and handy? Yes, absolutely. Especially if you work at an independent shop or a dealership, you can't always call AAA or call your local tow yard to come on down to unlock it. Having a lockout kit is absolutely crucial. Sometimes 
people don't tell you that their keys don't work and then you can't unlock the car door and next thing you know you got to figure out how to get into it and the only key that works is the ignition key okay these are things to think about sometimes technicians don't check to see if the lock unlock works and they just lock the car and walk away for the night next day you're stuck trying to figure out how to unlock it so yes a lockout kit is beneficial and handy the last page, Milwaukee Packout System. So they got this new packout system, it looks like, where they actually have little hangers for wrenches, for your cordless, for screwdrivers, for pliers, for everything. They got an entire wall-to-wall -wall design packout system, organizing system. So look, if I was ever going to buy one product line and I'm a DIY or I'm at the house and I'm a just a do-it-yourselfer or a backyard mechanic, man... And I only wanted one product line that was affordable that I could pretty much get from any damn Home Depot out there. I would go with Milwaukee and I would buy all these different wall hangers and hang it up. That way you didn't have to worry about wasting floor space in your garage, having some toolbox that you don't need. You can just hang it all on the wall. And I think that saves a lot of space. And I think it's a smart idea. All right, next page. We got impact sockets here. I don't really know the name brand of these. They don't really look like it's, oh, it's all ATD. So these are all ATD impact sockets. We can talk impact sockets if you want, but realistically, look, they're gonna hold up. I've bought the cheap of the cheap and they just held up over the years and I really don't see any reason to buy super expensive impact sockets. I've had Snap-on super expensive impact sockets and I can tell you the metal was so soft, every single year I was having to warranty them out. I bought cheap impact sockets and I've never worn them out. I've had them for over a decade now. So as far as impact rated goes, I would go with the cheap hard ass metal impact ones. They don't split on you. They don't softly wear out. They're great. They work great. Would I use them all the time? No, because the metal is so thick, it can't get into certain spots. That's when you are going to want some kind of chrome setup. But for my half inch, my half inch is all impact. Okay, it's all impact. For my quarter inch, three eighths, yeah, I got a mixture here and there of chrome and some impact for this, that, and the other wobblies, etc. That stuff you can go nuts on. Half inch stuff, if you're just a DIY mechanic or even an independent shop mechanic or even a dealership mechanic, I've been all three. I can tell you I've gotten away with using impact and half inch only for almost, you know, what, 13 years, 14 years almost. So... Yeah, you can. You can get you can get away with just having a deep and shallow set. You don't need mids, you don't need crumbs, and you're you're good. You might need 12 point for certain head nuts, like on a six liter, right? Certain things like that. Fine. Then then buy the one for that. I bought a husky socket in a 12 point, 18 millimeters, specifically for the bulletproof kit on the six liter. So that just gives you food for thought. All right, backside page. Look, we got some more tools here. Slide hammers. I, I have a small snap-on one. I don't have a big heavy-duty one. I guess a 10-pound slide hammer could be beneficial. I don't have a need for one right now. The shop has one. That's cool. They got some pokey prod things, electrical testers, stuff like that that ATD has done. A lot of this stuff looks like it's ATD month. I think the month of April is ATD month. Okay, adjustable bumper stand. Okay, I, I don't know. I guess if you're pulling bumpers off all the time, sure. I just take the bumper and put it on top of my hutch or I find some kind of moving cloth, lay it down, and then I set it down on the ground behind the car. This little stand here, though, the capacity, the 500-pound capacity work stand. This work stand does come in handy as a dealer tech and as an independent shop tech. If you're working on vans and you got to take the side door off to do a window regulator and you can lay the door down, this is what you're going to want, Okay. This thing will come in handy. Not everybody needs them, but if one shop has one, you're good. If you're the guy doing window regulators on vans all the time, you may consider getting one, okay? Paint guns. Yep, they got paint guns. They got ATD polishers and buffers. Couldn't tell you much about those things. Next page, VIM tools. Okay, they got the tap it wrenches. They got Torx bits. They got E-Torx. -E they got tamper Torx. They got uh, spark plug sockets. Uh, that wobble looks like extra deep. I don't see a magnetic portion on here. They got bit sets and then they have the half cut Torx bit drive socket set. Would these ever come in handy? Yes, especially if you're working on Euro cars. I found out at Audi, you need these. Absolutely. If you're working on a lot of Euro cars, you're going to need this tinier Torx bit set. They will come in handy. You cannot just use a regular standardized Torx bit with the big old socket piece on the end won't work you can't just get away with a little tiny titty bit set right here won't work 
These, these are going to be your pride and joy if you're working on euros a lot. Otherwise, VIM is a good product, okay? They also have some tappet wrenches. What are tappet wrenches? Extra thin. You are going to need those, especially if they decide to put a ground wire on top of a stud, which also has a nut base, and then it has a nut on top. It gets squished together. You're going to need an ultra-thin wrench to get in there to crack it loose so you don't rip the wire in half, unless you want to cut, re-solder this, that, and the other. Up to you. All right, going on to the back page, we got some Sunex. Now, I do have some Sunex products, and Sunex has been a pretty decent brand over the years. I haven't really had any trouble with them. I've found their tools to be beneficial, especially with the magnetic sockets. Magnetic sockets are definitely a plus. How are their wrenches? Don't know, don't have a lot of wrenches. Do have the crow's feet and the flare nut. Crow's feet have held up, no chrome peel, no nothing. Last page, nothing really new here. They do have this little tiny Knipix mini adjustable plier wrench. You guys could tell me how sweet that is. I've been enjoying the teeny tiny pliers myself. I don't know how I feel about that. You guys can let me know. And that will wrap it up for our April ProTech 2023 catalog review. We did talk about the Icon Raptor pliers. You got a chance to see me a day in the life as an independent shop mechanic doing my thing. You're gonna get a lot of things tossed your way. You're gonna work on a lot of different vehicles, all different age groups, all different manufacturers. The amount of tools that you need is gonna be ridiculous, but you're gonna love it. You're gonna enjoy it. And it's definitely got that family feel and vibe to it. And it's something you could really sink your teeth in and keep for a lifetime. I've been lucky and fortunate enough to have now returned for the third time. Okay, and I love the fact that we are just that tight to where that was even a possibility. So I'm starting to feel like myself. I'm starting to get my groove back. I'm working on things in my relationship with my girlfriend and our child that we had together. My daughter's enjoying soccer. I'm trying to figure out my budget of life. I'm trying to figure everything out. And you know what? Good energy, good energy, positive attitude, forward motion, baby. I'm forward motion. I'm looking forward to taking care of business. I'm, I'm happy to be back in action here on YouTube. Happy to see each and every single one of you guys. Can't wait to see what your comments are. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all I have for tonight. Cheers to those of you who have your beers. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Deuces.